How many more senior citizens are you going to interview for your report, Professor Lawrence? Oh, 20 or 30 more should do it. And let's not call them senior citizens. They're old people. And old people put up with more discrimination in housing, in jobs, in just day-to-day -day living than any other minority group you can name. Not to mention crime against the elderly. Huh? Getting old must be really awful. Oh, it's the pits. Unless, of course, you consider the alternative. the glamour. I did have my heart set on being a Playboy bunny. They said I was too short. <laughs> Hell, nobody'd hire an old buzzard like me. So I began to look around, see what I could do. I saw all these old coots sniffing in the trash cans. Kind of lumped them with the loonies you see on the street, picking up pieces of string and tin foil. And I noticed that the old bag people weren't crazy. They were just surviving as best as they could. How? Well, you find lots of good stuff you can use. Books you can sell to the used bookstore around the corner. 15, 20 cents. Pop-up toasters that don't pop up. You know, we're very fortunate to be living in such a rich country. I bet we got the best trash in the world. because I enjoy it. Move it, lady. Go back to the zoo. So, what happens after you finish with your interviews? I'll turn it into the Congresswoman's caucus and they'll use it as a basis for new legislation. More laws. More? Better. If we can send men to the moon, we ought to be able to give jobs and feed and clothe our old people. What? Oh, don't take it personally. Nobody really cares about us. Hell. I didn't care either until I got old. I don't know. Maybe things are changing. Why'd you say that? Oh, Margaret, you're not so old and you care. Thanks. Yeah, well, you know spring chicken either. <laughs> Sadie, how'd you like to come and have dinner at my place? Your place? When? Tomorrow. Unless you've got other plans. Other plans? Well... Since Warren Beatty hasn't called me back by now, to hell with him. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. My address.
make wonderful pets. They tell you that, so you'll go out and buy a teeny weeny dog collar. Oh. Mrs. Lawrence. Yes. Would you step this way, please? I'd like to thank you for coming down. Lieutenant, who is it? Oh, well, um. Please. What's happening, Lieutenant? An old lady named Sadie Ross was found dead this morning. Murdered. Oh, no. We found your name and address in her purse, so we figured we should talk to you. Poor Sadie. How did it happen? She had a throat cut. Who knows what makes people do what they do? I know. People are all damn good. Will you knock it off? Who is this man? I'm sorry, I thought you two met outside. Uh, Mrs. Lawrence, this is Sergeant Cy Shaver. He's a policeman? It's a scandal, isn't it? It's all I can do on what they pay me. How well did you know the deceased? Well, I, uh, I knew her quite well over the past few weeks. She was helping me with my research project. What could you tell us about her? Well, she was old. And poor. She was a bad lady. She lived on the refuse of others. She did the best she could. Do you know if she had any enemies? I don't think so. Uh, at least not that she mentioned. It's clean. No enemies and nothing to steal. Oh, she has something to steal, all right. Nearly $2,000. Bag of snowflakes. Okay. That can't be, not Sadie. Where'd you get this stuff? The old lady's room. It was all stuck down to the bottom of one of her bags. What do you mean? It only plays one way. Old Sadie was a mule. She decided to go into business for herself. A mule? That's someone who moves drugs for the mob. She probably figured if she skimmed a teensy bit here and a teensy bit there, nobody would notice, and she wouldn't have to live off tips anymore. Well, somebody noticed. She wanted to make a small killing. Instead, she wound up being one. Well, what are you going to do about it? Our very best, Mrs. Lawrence. You can trust us. Now, you've really been a big help. You've really done your duty. You'll probably get a postcard from the mayor. What was that all about? Trust me, I know the type. She's one of those crazy, bleeding hearts whose eyes start going round in circles if she finds out somebody so much as kicked a dog in outer Mongolia. You gotta get the flakes out fast or you don't get them out. Wait a minute. Is this your big toe talking? Let's see. You know, it's a wonder you don't weigh a ton the way you eat. I do weigh a ton, but I've got this terrific tailor. Oh, right. Yeah. Lieutenant, you I know it. I know it. It's lucky the Russians don't know about that big toe of yours. Lieutenant, I'd like to talk to you. Sure. Oh my God. It looks like feeding time at the zoo. I take that back. The animals wouldn't eat that junk. What are you going to do about Sadie? About solving the murder? We'll, uh, we'll take care of it. How? Or is it just a small killing? Isn't that what you said? That's just a figure of speech, ma'am. A most unfortunate figure of speech. Uh, aren't you going to have some, uh, lunch? We Mrs. have some procedures, Mrs. Lawrence. Oh, what are they? Well, we've, uh, talked to all of her neighbors. Unfortunately, they didn't even know her name. No eyewitnesses. And that's it? No, no. Uh, maybe we could plant one of our ladies on the street for a couple of days. You know, it's a decoy. To, we could dress her up like one of the bag ladies. Why not? With little Miss Sticky Fingers out of the way, they might try to replace her. Yeah, our girl might see something. We could get lucky. Tell me something, Lieutenant. If Sadie were a somebody, not just old and poor, would you settle for luck? We only have so much manpower, Mrs. Lawrence. What a terrific convenience for you. Everything you don't care about. Alive, Sadie was a nobody. 
dead, she's the deceased. She deserves more than that. We all do. Whether you're a bad lady or a big shot. Listen, lady, I got a caseload that just thinking about it gives me a hernia. Every time the police ask the voters for more money, people like you make us fight for every nickel. And now you're screaming for us to spend more time trying to grab a killer or some old dame who moved junk around the city. These are... Now what about the people who pay Sage to push that junk? You don't do anything about that either. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We do what we can. Look, to people like you, we're pigs until you come down from your ivory tower for ten minutes to get a whiff of the real world. Do-gooders who don't do much, except shake your finger at us mere mortals who have to do your dirty work. <laughs> Lieutenant, I want to be your decoy. What? You said you were going to put somebody on the streets. Mrs. Lawrence, the sergeant was just talking. Well, I'm volunteering. A do-gooder coming down from her ivory tower. Have you gone crazy, Mrs. Mrs. Do you want to wind up dead in a trash can? Your hands are getting dirty just thinking about it. I'm not asking your permission, Sergeant. Bright and early tomorrow morning, I'll be out there with my shopping bag. I'll haul you in for vagrancy. I'll have a hundred dollars and my ID in my shoe. You try to hassle me, Sergeant, and I'll slap you with a false arrest suit so fast your head will spin. She's going to do it. Don't just sit there, Lieutenant. Tell me I'm dreaming. Tell me I'm crazy. She's going to do it. Don't tell me that. And you'd better keep an eye on her. What do you mean, keep an eye on her? Just what I said. Don't let her get into any trouble. What do you suggest I do? I suggest you keep an eye on her. Oh, well, thanks for clearing that up for me. What I want to know is what happened to everybody. When did they all turn into flakes? Can't you even tell me where you're going? I'm afraid not, Annie. The whole idea is for me to be where I can't be reached. You know, I need to be by myself, otherwise I'll never make any headway with this report. What about your seminar? I've arranged for Professor Watkins to fill in for me. But what if something urgent comes up? I tell you what, I'll call in every few days. Congresswoman Chambers will be in L.A. on the 14th. She'll expect to meet with you. Will you be back by then? Sure. I should have finished my work by then. She's never gone off to work like this before. I've never had this much work to do before. You know, I've got to get away from conferences and luncheons and... Telephones, especially telephones. Good morning. It's a man, isn't it? I beg your pardon. You can tell me. What? You're going off with a man, aren't you? Oh, you dear sweet thing. <laughs> you take care of it. Bye, darling.
Bunny. What are you doing here? Asking myself that very same question. You can take the girl out of Buckingham Palace, but you can't take Buckingham Palace out of the girl. I used to be married to a woman like that. Very fastidious. She didn't like cops very much either. How are you gonna find that $20 bill I stashed in there if you don't dive in there and look for it? You put a $20 bill in here? I figured you could use the incentive. He's just a busted up old radio. A treasure. You can turn it into a planter. Listen, on the bright side, you didn't come across any rats, did you? There are rats in here? Hardly ever. Oh. Just like the $20 bill, huh, Sergeant? Sort of. This was Sadie's turf. You gonna be hanging around here? It's my turf now, Sergeant. Sergeant, that word falling on the wrong ears could cost me my life. I'd appreciate you refraining from calling me that, ma'am. Thank you. Have a nice day. I'm a bum, remember? Are you just gonna let them get away? Yeah. I don't believe it. They stole my bags. So get some more garbage. It's free. nightmare. In the shadows, he must have mistaken you for a large bottle of vino. Oh, you mean he wouldn't have... No, not Chandler. He's harmless. Although he might have tried to drink you. Oh. Good night, Sergeant. And thank you. Good night. Hey. Feel like a cup of coffee? Yeah. I have to meet you out of the district. Yes, I suppose we should. Poor motherless bum, a cup of coffee, ma'am. A cup of coffee for a motherless son. You having a good time? Not since my coronation have I had so many laughs. Hmm. Tell me something. Why do you resent my offer to help if you're as undermanned as you claim? Undermanned, not underwomaned. Oh, so that's it. Not really. 
I resent your butting in because you assume you could walk in off the street and do my job. I'm not saying I could be a policeman, but that I could pass myself off as a bag lady. And finally, we get around to the seemingly trivial matter of my life. My big toe, which has never lied to me, is telling me to watch out. It's telling me that I could, thanks to you, wind up in the morgue with a slug in my head, having had to cover your hiney as well as my own. I'll worry about my own hiney. Uh-huh. In the meantime, I think you ought to get going home. Tomorrow's another day. Unless, of course, you're getting ready to call off this masquerade. Which I'm not. I'm in this for keep, Shaber, whether you and your big toe like it or not. Stubborn little diggins, aren't you? Well, mules are supposed to be stubborn, aren't they? So are you here. From now on, I think we ought to work up some signals. It doesn't look good for us to be seen talking so much together. Does that mean we'll be working together? Of course it doesn't mean we'll be working together. I already have a partner. Then what do we need signals for, then? In case you need me for something. Under the stairwell of your apartment house, there's a crack in the wall about two feet off the floor. You can leave me notes in there. If we need to meet, I suggest one of the benches on the east side of the lake. What if I need to meet you at night? Night? Well, I'm uh, either at uh, Molly's, uh, it's a bar on Temple, or at the Glendon Theater. You like old movies? Yeah, I like old movies. You? Some of them. I wanted to grow up just to be like Carol Lombard. Yeah. Them's the brakes. I want to be Gable. Same brakes. <sighs> Do you like foreign movies? No, I can't understand what they're saying. That's why they have subtitles. Listen, lady, if I wanted to read, I'd stay home with a book. On your way home. Second can from the corner. A surprise. Another 20. Better. A little box of Epsom salts. Best thing for aching feet. Why, thank you, Shaver. Yeah. Good night, Lombard. Night, Gable. What do you want? These are my cans. Beat it, sister. This is my block, my turf. Take a hike. I will not take a hike. You take a hike. Do you have any last words for your next of kin? You don't scare me. Why don't you just buzz off? Scram. You'll hear from my lawyers. Fine, just tell them to stay away from my cans. Hello, dear. Hello. My name's Rose. I'm Margaret. Uh. Oh, it's all right, dear. I'm sure I've touched worse things. <laughs> How are you doing so far? Slim pickings, I'm afraid. Oh, it's the state of the economy, you know. Really? People are slower to throw things away nowadays. I I'll introduce you to the others. Huh? <laughs> wow. Seven. Uh, folks, uh, th this is Mel. Geraldine, Leon, Hi. Charlie, and Hi. Corinne. This Hi. is Margaret. Margaret, say, you the one who decked Doris? I guess so. You guess so? Well, I didn't know her name. She decked Doris? Yep. <laughs> Come on, let's give her a big hand. Why, 
do old people see birds? I guess because they make us feel needed. Funny, you know, when I was young, I didn't even like birds. Messy things. Then one day you wake up and you're an old person and the pigeons are there waiting, saying, what took you so long? We're famished. <laughs> I had a dog, Barney. He died two years ago next month. The last few years were very embarrassing. Why do you say that? Well, I go to the store to buy Barney his dog food. And I get these funny looks from people. I don't understand. Because I was so old and poor, see? They all... They all thought I was buying it for myself. I, sometimes I just wish I were dead. Oh, girl. <laughs> Aren't you gonna uh, eat your pie? Look beat. I am. It was a dumb idea, Shaver, you were right. Nobody's gonna contact me. I wasted enough time and should get back to work. You sure now? Well, uh, you, uh... You gave it your best shot. You got nothing to be ashamed of. Really. Thanks, Shaver. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, see you around. Yeah. See you around. You want me to walk you back to your place? No. I wouldn't want you to wind up in the morgue. some easy money. Doing what? I just want you to carry an occasional package from one place to another. Can you do that? What kind of a package? And ask no questions. Is it a deal? Sure. Here's an advance. Half for you. Have to have a phone installed under the name of Smith. We'll be in touch. When? When will it be in touch? about it, Mrs. Lawrence. They kill people. Right now, if they even suspected you weren't on the up and up, they'd kill you. Hey, I'll kill you both if you don't pipe down. Come on, let's get out of here. What does your wife do? What? Your wife. I'm not married. But you mentioned that I resembled your wife. She's gone. No, not dead, gone. After 27 years of marriage, she decided she needed to find herself. Did you? Last I heard, she'd found herself in Key West, shacked up with a 32-year-old beachcomber. <laughs> oh. That's okay. 
I guess it is kind of funny now. At the time, it was less amusing. It's crazy. After 27 years, you figure it's for keeps. Like they say, it was a life sentence, but she got time off for good behavior. Do you think they'll call soon? Don't worry. They'll call. You getting nervous? Yeah, a little. Uh, make that a lot. Your husband? Yeah. The living guy? Mm-hmm. Those your daughters? Yeah. Pretty girls. And smart, too. Yeah. Angela's an anthropologist, and Irene works for time in London. You? Any children? Boy. Son. Jeez. He's 25 already. Where is he? Who knows? One day you got a kid named Frankie who thinks the sun rises and sets on his old man, and the next, you got some stranger sending you Christmas cards signed, Sincerely, Frank. Do you think of having a pet? After Dorothy took off, I bought myself a parakeet and a goldfish. And? They both died. I'll tell you, Margaret. Sorry if I call you Margaret. Sure. I'll tell you, Margaret. The man's just a damn fool if he puts his trust in anything. Then long live fools. This is talking about myself. Your husband died and your kids flew the coop, didn't they? Where does that leave you? On my own two feet. Children should live their own lives. I had 26 wonderful years with David. I miss him, sure. You know, 26 loving years is not to be sneezed at, Sergeant. I guess my marriage was okay for the first 26 years. It was the 27th that stunk. 32-year-old beachcomber. Well, I bet he's 40 of you a day. Probably deal a little dope on the side. I never yet met a beachcomber I trusted. Self-pity, Sergeant? I prefer to think of it as cynicism. You want a cup? Yeah. Look, uh, I was just wondering, uh, you bowl? what? You bowl. You know, bowl. I was saying they're going bowling tonight. I usually go with my partner Garrison, but he's still in the hospital. So I figured if you bowl, uh, you're probably busy. Well, I've bowled, but not lately. How long has it been? 1948. That long? Uh, don't worry, it's just like... Don't tell me it's like riding a bike. In 1961, David and I were in France. And I tried riding a bike, but I can assure you, after 30 years, even riding a bike is not like riding a bike. You want to go bowling, or would you rather go to the opera? Oh, I love the opera. But they're not in town. Do you like the opera? No, but uh, I figured it probably wasn't in town. That's why I look like a good sport. What if it had been in town? Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. Tell me the truth. You ever been to an opera? No. Well, I can imagine. All that singing in a foreign language. All those people singing about dying. And love. It's the same thing. They both hurt like hell. Hey. Self-pity? We don't want any backsliding, Sergeant. Do you want to go bowling or not? Sure. Hello? Is this the lady that's going to carry a package from place to place? Yes. Listen good. This is what she had to do.
Checking in as promised. Congresswoman Chambers is in town. That's impossible. She's not due here until the 14th. Something came up. She wants to have lunch with you today. Today? What time? 12.30 at the faculty club. Well, I guess we just have no other choice. Chambers has been waiting half an hour. I'm not 30 minutes late. She's two weeks early. Isn't it a beautiful day? The only thing I know that can turn a third stage smog alert into a beautiful day is a man. Oh, it is a bit smoggy, isn't it? So? Who is he? Oh, don't silly. Silly? I think it's wonderful. Where'd you meet him? What's he do? Believe me, Annie, if at my age I would have fallen in love, you know, I mean, that is... Oh, it's a speech was... therapist. He could give you a rage. There's someone I'm working on a project with. What's he like? It's definitely not my type. Oh, that type. Now, where are we meeting Congresswoman Shaver, anyway? Who? I mean, Chambers. <laughs> <laughs> right this way. Unavoidable. The congresswoman turned up unexpectedly. I don't care if you were meeting with the president to discuss something really important, like the prices of popcorn at movie theaters. It was still a bonehead play. What if you were being tailed? I left by the back door. Oh, that's okay, then. Who would think to watch a back door? You're not playing with kids, Mrs. Lawrence. They murdered Sadie Ross, if you remember, and she wasn't even working with us. I'm sorry. It won't happen again, I promise. I didn't mean to scream at you. It's okay. I had it coming. Well, it's a cute outfit. Thanks, Sergeant. What time are you going to be free? About five. I'll be back to pick you up. Okay. I'm in Humanities, the red brick monster across the quad, room 213. Five o'clock sharp. <laughs> right in the gutter. Come to think of it, that's where I ended up when I was trying to ride that bicycle in France. <laughs> Seems like you ought to get points for putting the ball there with such consistency. You got a point there. I mean, look how big the alley is and how tiny the gutters are. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. You said it. <laughs> you see, you can't hit the gutter to save yourself. You spoiled your perfect game. Yeah. The final score, if you're interested. I'm not. 
is 187 to 3. A real edge of the seat affair with tension mounting to the very last frame. And now a word from our sponsor. Not bad. How about coming up to my place? What do you mean, come up to your place? You know what I mean. A little heavy breathing will do us both a lot of good. You've been under a lot of pressure lately. Try warm milk or a cold shower. Warm milk won't cut it. But you were starting to like me. I thought so, too. Um... I live that away, Sergeant. Ah, uh, Margaret. I was wondering about the bowling. What about it? Was that your idea of foreplay? Dames. I thought you were different. No, oh, Sergeant. You thought I wasn't. She is. I'm telling you, we shouldn't go in. comes out, we go in. I don't like it. You checked the dentist out. He seems legit. Suppose they just tested her. We're just blowing the lady's cover. If Dr. Tobias is legit, we can keep it quiet. Now, if he's not kosher, we'll use him to smoke out the suppliers. Wrong. If he's connected, it won't kill us to cool it for a few more days. Whatever else he might be, he's a successful dentist. He's not going to fly the coup for no good reason. And if he's not connected, all we'll have done is fingered Mrs. Lawrence for the mob. Nobody's gonna know we talked to the dentist. You're dreaming. Come on. If they're testing her, watching her, they'll know. And that dentist, wouldn't he tell everybody he knew? Maybe even a few he didn't? Let's sit tight for a few days, huh? Forget it. We're not going in. testing me, does that mean they're suspicious? Maybe just extra cautious. They don't want it to happen again. I'm sorry about the other night. I guess when you come on like Burt Reynolds, you ought to at least look like Burt Reynolds. I was out of line. That's okay. I blamed it on your youth. Want a banana? I'd love a banana. It's just that when you've been married your whole life, and all of a sudden you're not married, you just don't know how. Anyway, I was out of line, and I'm sorry. What I should have told you is that I had something very special with David person just can't live on old memories. Yes, you can. It depends on the person. It depends on the memories. 
Isn't this a terrific thing? Huh? So neat. I tell you, when he invented the banana, God was at the top of his form. And I bet he wasn't a day over 30. It would take somebody young to come up with a banana. An old guy would come up with an artichoke or a pomegranate, something that's more trouble than it's worth. Trouble was, God wouldn't leave well enough alone. One day when he was probably my age, he invented people. Oh, for crying out loud, Shave, but not that old tune again. What have you got against people? Or is it that cop mentality of yours? You know, we're not all crooks and killers, all beachcombers. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, that's okay. You throw a hell of a right hook, lady. I'm gonna have to learn to keep my guard up. Me too. More on the nose. Good old dependable St. Timothy's. The days seem to get longer and longer. And the years shorter and shorter. Hello. We've been testing you. No pickup place tomorrow. He's a student from Columbia. He gets his transportation and tuition paid, and all he has to do is make a delivery. Yeah, pretty good deal, huh? Just duck. You give us any names? Say he was contacted in Columbia. He doesn't know anyone here. What about Mrs. Lawrence? She's got the stuff at home. What do you mean, she's just sitting on it? Those were her instructions. You know, I hope we get her through this mess in one piece. It's getting kind of dicey. Yeah, I know. Hello? Is that you, lady? Yes. Delivery tomorrow. What time? Before 10 in the morning, the market on Lake Street. That's right, why are we running? 
because you were chasing me. You were around before I chased you. I was jogging before you chased me. You don't dress like a jogger. Oh, yeah, what does a jogger dress like? Wear shorts. Yeah, well, it's too cold for shorts. Ah, I think I got a Charlie horse. Just walk it off, you'll be okay. Bikes are good this morning. There's some green kid like a rookie. You saw him running. What else could you do? Ah, getting so old and fat and slow. It all looks like running to me. Not so fast. Thank you. How could the package just disappear? And all the time I was off on my wild goose chase, anybody could have made off with it. What exactly did the guy tell you to do on the telephone? They told me to put the package in the trash can outside the market and to do it before 10 o'clock. Do you think someone at the market's involved? Could be. Why did I have to have it there before 10 o'clock? So that the garbage collectors wouldn't cart it off before it could be collected. What if the garbage collector's involved? Come again? Why not? It makes sense. A three-stage delivery system. He has the students bring in the stuff, then he has his faithful old bag lady, and finally the garbage truck that not only picks up, but delivers. No, no, why don't they just have the students just make their deliveries to the trash cans? Because the students arrive on different days of the week, and to cut the risk down of them being caught with the stuff on them, they give it to me, and I hang on to it until trash collection day. Sure makes sense. You really think so? Yeah. And if you say it's elementary, my dear Watson, I'll bop you one. Nice going. You too. When did you pick it up? This morning. Three more foreign scholars are going to have to do their studying closer to home. Trash pick up tomorrow? OK, we'll put sugar in one of the bags. That's as good as telling them Mrs. Lawrence works for it. Not necessarily. They could figure one of their student couriers got greedy. Yeah, they could, but they won't. We're going to need this evidence, Cy. Once we let this stuff out of our hands, there's no guarantee in the world that we're ever going to see it again. And when I get to court on this one, I want to nail them. So it's going to be trash pickup tomorrow, and we'll see if it's the garbage truck, all right? Cy. Don't worry about Mrs. Lawrence. We're going to take care of her. Yeah. And here comes the withdrawal. Yeah, we got it.
I thought you were all wired up. Limited range. I gave him this number. Nervous? Yeah, feels kind of strange. I've been this other person for so long, and now one phone call, and I could go back to being myself. Finding the processor is just the first step. Yeah, but you'll be able to get him to tell you who he's working for, won't you? Well, that's what we're hoping for, of course. Offer him a deal and hope he sings. You must be looking forward to having this case wound up. I'm looking forward to throwing out trash for a change. <laughs> Well, uh, after the case is all wrapped up, uh, do you think we might get together? You know, maybe go to the opera or something. Well, I'm going to be kind of busy. A lot of catching up to do, as you can imagine. Oh, yeah, sure, I can understand that. But maybe after a while... your friend. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. You really are a policeman, aren't you? What did you think? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to figure you as a cop with guns and handcuffs and shooting people. I guess you're just more believable as a bum. <laughs> Funny thing, that's what my lieutenant says. Better wait here. Fellow came out as soon as the garbage truck pulled away. Just couldn't wait to take in his empty trash can, huh? Oh, yeah, well, there's a lot of pilferage in this neighborhood. Mm hmm. How soon do you figure we'll get our search warrant? Four hours. Four hours? Okay, see old Judge Michaels? He and his secretary took a long lunch. At the Dixie Canyon Motel. Sugar. The other two bags are fine, top grade goods. Well, how the devil could this happen? You sound frightened. Don't worry. Oh, do I sound frightened? Well, it just so happens I am. And it just so happens you still owe me $40,000 from the last batch I processed. So if you'd like to square accounts, I'll be here for another 30 minutes. If not, I'll flush two bags of pure cocaine and one bag of pure cane sugar down the toilet. Mr. McCary wants to cut ties with us, Michael. Why don't you go help him cut them? And the bag lady? For her, I think we'll give her a new route. They're not still trying to get that warrant from Judge Michaels, are they? Judge Anderson. Uh, but he has a secretary, too. You gotta be kidding.
feeling it's gotta be the guy. This must be it. Thanks. Yep. Here it is. Let's go. Damn that Judge Henderson and his secretary. We botched it, plain and simple. What do we do now? Lieutenant, I want you to leave town. Maybe go see one of your daughters. Nope. Don't you want to see him? Oh, don't play dumb, Shaber. Of course I do, but not this way. I'm not running. I told him you wouldn't. He did? Mm -hmm. Well, you were right for once. Hello? Yeah. Two. That was short. Pickups tomorrow. Where? What time? Tenth and Carmelo, middle of the block at nine o'clock. That's not your turf. You're not going. But if I don't go, they'll know for sure I'm working with the police. And all this would have been for nothing. What a waste that would be. But if they're setting you up for a hit, if they kill you, that would be a waste, Margaret. doing here it's a free country this is my street you got no business on my street i'm not working here i'm walking yeah and i'm surely temple you got your bag don't you just shopping i suppose i told you i'm not working this street last time you come with a sucker punch. i just want to cross the street running. They can't make me and you can't make me. These are very bad people. I know that, Lieutenant. I'm not a child. I'm also not a coward. Nobody said you're a coward. And I don't think my husband would like me to have turned tail and run. And I know darn well my mother wouldn't. And she was a lawyer back when women weren't lawyers. She never ran away from a fight in her life, and I'm her daughter. Will you talk some sense into her? Will it do any good? No. I tried. Thanks. Okay, Mrs. Lawrence, here's the way it is. Either you let us put you on a plane out of town, or we're putting you under protective custody. I have a life to live, Lieutenant. 
reports to do, classes to teach, and seminars to attend. I've given you your two choices, Mrs. Lawrence. Now, which is it going to be? I'll leave town. How about your place? My place? Well, as I recall, you were pretty anxious to get me there a couple of weeks ago. You're supposed to leave town. That's one man's opinion. I have my orders. Did you actually say that with a straight face? I guess that did sound funny coming from me, didn't it? <laughs> I think I figured out a way to track them down before they track me down. Wow. With a little help from my friends. Shaver, are you a friend? You stop calling me Shaver and start calling me Sai. That's a deal. There's just one thing, Sai. What's up? I'll be staying at your place, but there'll be, uh... No hanky-panky? That's right. Big deal. You're probably not such hot stuff anyway. Actually, I'm very hot stuff. I really don't mind having to wash it, Si. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, real good. Thank you. It's nice having somebody to cook for. Hmm? Sometimes. There's something so lonely about having to cook for oneself. I wonder that the singles around here aren't wasted away. I'm always throwing food out. Of course, by the time I get to it, I don't know if it's a cantaloupe or a head of lettuce. <laughs> Tell me your plan for smoking out these creeps. I really don't want to tell you, Si. Why not? Just because, besides being a good friend, Si Shaver, you're also Sergeant Shaver. And you're going to be breaking the law? No, nothing like that. But as you put it, I am a civilian. And if I tell you my plan and you think it's all wet, then I'll lose my confidence. And I need all I can get. Tell me your plan, Margaret. Promise to tell me it's great, even if you don't think it is. Especially if I don't think it is. Really? Let her rip, Margaret. to be here by 7 o'clock. Are they coming? Most of them said they'd try. Oh, you're a good man, Shaper. Don't I get a reward? Oh, don't you dare say anything about riding a bicycle. here as soon as we could. Tell me about it. Margaret, is that you? Yes, Rose, it is. You don't look like the Margaret I know. Well, when the others get here, I'll explain everything to you. Please come in, make us all at home. <laughs> hey, is it a nice place you got here? Yeah, thanks. I decorated it myself. So, I've asked you all here this evening because I need your help. Now, so far, the police have had no luck. 
Uh, lady, you, you, you don't really think that the cops are going to bust their heinies uh, trying to find out who killed one of us, do you? I'll have you know that Cy Shaver here has been busting his heiny looking for Sadie's killer. Cy? Um, Sergeant Shaver. He's with the police department. He's... You don't look like no policeman I ever saw. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, what can we do? Find a beige plastic bag that has sugar in it. And that's going to tell you who killed old Sadie? Yes. Who they are and where they are. These men deal in cocaine. One of the bags they stole last night from a downtown lab was filled with sugar. Mm. Now, before the next trash collection, my guess is they'll throw that bag away. Well, uh, how do you know that they live on one of our streets? Yeah. Because the last time I had a phone call from them, I could hear the bells of St. Timothy's ringing in the background. At least, I think it was St. Timothy's. Will you help me? Well, um, uh, what is it worth to you if we find it? You think? Hey, you. It could be worth my life. How much do you want? Come on, uh, Enders, we don't need you. Get out of here. Uh, yeah, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. We'll do it ourselves. You can't hang a guy for trying. Besides, a little beige plastic bag. What could it be worth? Maybe a second cup of coffee? What is it, dear? I want to call off the search. I can't ask you to keep doing this for me. Then don't ask. But you... No buts. We're not only doing this for you, we're doing it for Sadie. We're doing it for all of us. That's, That's right. right. They get away with killing one poor old person, it gives them ideas. We're all in this together come hell or high water. And we've all been through hell and high water, so if that's all we're going to worry about, stop worrying. Forget it. Yeah. Let's get on with the spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> Leave those. I'll wash them later. If I just let them set. I was wrong about those friends of yours. Oh, aren't they something? Yeah. It's so easy to write them off. After all, they're just a bunch of old bums. I'm ashamed of myself. I mean, who am I looked out my nose at anybody? I don't think I could do what they've been doing. But you have been digging in trash cans, freezing and getting wet. Same as they have. That's different. I'm a cop. I'm on a case. <laughs> Is that it? Want to watch TV or something? No, thanks. You go ahead. Nothing much on these days. Like a brandy? Ooh, that would be nice. Thank you. Yeah. It's 
nice. Mm. Like old married people. Except no hanky panky. Yeah. Like old married people. <laughs> oh, it's nice to laugh. I haven't had much to laugh at lately. It's only two days until trash pickup. That bag will turn up, you'll see. Is that you or your big toe talking? Toe. And it's never wrong? Not yet. But I'm about to put it to the test. Wasn't the test, Margaret? Aren't we supposed to wait half an hour after eating? That's swimming. Streets and look for the others. No way. You hear from one of your spies, you let me know and I'll check it out. But you, young lady, you gotta stay put. You take care, too. The mailboxes. I made. I made a list. Here, there it is. I have to get this back to the apartment. Yeah. Well. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah, this must weigh a ton. Yeah. We can do it. Will you pay for the dress? Yeah, it's a deal. Oh. I called back. You didn't answer. I got worried. What are you doing? Figuring out which of the eight tenants threw out the plastic bag. Oh, good. I thought you were just trying to break my lease. How are you coming? Well, I've narrowed it down to three. No, make that two. Anthony Bates, it isn't. How do you know? Rejection slip from the New Yorker. That leaves Myron Hennings and Earl Rice. Oh. 
Myron Hennings. Annette Myers, I hope. Oh! What is it? It's a letter to Mr. Rice from Bogota, Colombia. Let's see. And I bet you thought I was just another pretty face. I just lost my appetite. I want to talk to you about your relatives in Colombia. I don't have any. How about this? You got connections here running drugs. I think you'd better leave. You know what I think? I think you're eating fat, boss, because you're living off of drug money. I'm going to have you up on charges. Who's working with you? Where's your cutter? Out cutting, no doubt, on the street somewhere. Every boy needs a hobby. <laughs> so much. I mean, it was a real team effort. I, yeah. I'm very grateful to you. We're the ones that should be grateful. Why? Well, you made life exciting for us. For a few days, we weren't just a bunch of old scavengers. We were like regular people. We had a reason for waking up in the morning. Thanks to you, Margaret, dear. We really mattered. Oh, you do matter. All of you matter. I will never forget you ever. We won't ever forget you either. Oh, big deal. At our age, when we talk about forever, it could be uh, a week and a half. <laughs> How right you are. For that. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Bye baby. Goodbye. goodbye now. Much Bye love. Now. Oh, good luck. Bye now. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.
got to help me. That man's trying to kill me. What is man? What are you talking about? Oh, he's gone now, but he was in the elevator. He's trying to kill me. He's a murderer. Please, you're going to have to let go of my arm. Who's there? I want at all points on Margaret Lawrence, female, Caucasian, medium build, age about 50, hair color brown, eyes hazel, maybe dressed like a bag lady and maybe in danger. Margaret Diane Lawrence, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband. I do. Then with the authority vested in me by the state of California, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not driving all the way to the car, I'm not dragging that stuff along. Come on, get in. Thank you. Here we go. Ah, nuts. Thank you. I think 
think you're going to work out okay, Shaver. I'll sure as hell try. i tell you what. What? Let's give it 26 years, and then we'll play it by ear. Lady, you got yourself a deal. This is a state and a country where every man is a king, but no man wears a crown. Then I want you to vote for Huey Long for the United States. Louisiana, 1932, a time of bread lines and soup kitchens, when people reached out for hope in the name of Huey Long. He established his reputation as a defender of the poor and spokesman against big business. Why we for slumber, America? Land of brave and free, with palaces and clothing and food for all. All belongs to you. The South had never seen the likes of one such colorful politician. Never write what you can phone, never phone what you can talk head in the head, never talk what you can nod, never nod what you can wink, never wink what you can look. That's rule number two. What's number one? Never question the kingfish. His aspirations led to the White House, but an assassin's bullet ended that dream. Oh, Roosevelt thinks I'm one of the two most dangerous men in the country. The other being Douglas MacArthur. I resent the company more than the allegation. Huey. Yeah. Hi. Edward Asner stars as the late United States Senator Huey Long in the life and assassination of the Kingfish. It was the mid-1920s when the appearance of a woman flashed across the consciousness of millions, successfully competing for headlines with bootleggers, flagpole sitters, sports figures, and the glittering personalities of Hollywood's silent era. She inspired the most impassioned belief and became known worldwide as Sister Amy. I was blindfolded and taken outside. They threw me into the back of an auto, bound and gagged, and we began to drive. They put a blanket over me so I couldn't see where we were going. I heard another machine following us. Finally, the auto stopped. They took me into an old adobe shack, dirty, with one poor room. Two days later, Steve came back and demanded again that I write a letter to you. When I refused, they cut off two locks of hair from my head. And if that doesn't convince her, we'll cut off your finger and we'll send that to her. In 1926, evangelist Amy Semple McPherson mysteriously disappeared from the beach in Venice, California, 
for claim to have been kidnapped left police officials skeptical and suspicious. There have been persistent rumors about your relationship with Kenneth Ormiston. Witnesses claim that they saw you with him in Salinas, in San Luis Obispo, riding with him in a blue Chrysler Coupe near Santa Barbara. Now, all this, supposedly, during the time you were missing. Mr. Ryan, since I was bound hand and foot in a Mexican desert, I obviously wasn't joyriding with Mr. Ormiston in Santa Barbara or anywhere else. While others had doubts, her congregation remained loyal. Betty Davis. Were you with Ormiston? Answer me. Were you with Ormiston? And Faye Dunaway star. They're setting you up, Amy. To pull you down. Well, let them try. Let them. My people will believe me. I'll win. A fascinating true story of religion, suspense, and love. The disappearance of Amy. Alex. I'm scared to death. If it helps, I love you. It does. that if I were to say yes, you wouldn't know what to do. I told you it was crazy. You wouldn't listen. Be quiet. I put people in jail for something Be like quiet. this. Why on earth would I tie myself down to someone like you? No talent, no money, no future. What's in it for me? All of you, sit down. Lord, it's a rogues gallery up there. Are we having a class reunion? Well, it's really very simple. When we finish here, we'll know something that we didn't know before. And what's that? Which one of you killed Monica Wells? Mm -hmm.